Hey, what's going on, people? Glendon Cameron. And I'm finally doing this video of some of the stuff that I read and I think you should read also. So, just to jump into it. And this is a recommend on all of this stuff. One of the things that I do is reflect backwards. I'll look at new books, then I'll go back and check out the older stuff because essentially certain principles are immutable to time. They just don't change. It's just like, you know, being good to good people. No, it's not said be good to everybody. Be good to good people, you will get goodness back. And this guy, because I'm going back, I heard about Edward Deming in high school. I had a very progressive social studies teacher. He was not, he was not the normal social studies teacher. Uh, he was doing a lot of really cool stuff. And that's something else too. As I reflect back from elementary school to middle school to high school, I had many male teachers. That's not the case now. I think that was another reason because he knew how to talk to guys more so than the female teachers. And I, I'm not looking at everybody to get all wrinkled up and lose their freaking minds because I said that, but it's just true. That was my experience. And I've talked to a few other guys and they said the same thing that, you know, we weren't in the same class. But anyhow, let's jump into it. Now, all of these books I have read at some point in my life. And we're just going to go down and I'm going to give you the first one you should get. This is reintroduced. You should get this. Um, as you can see, it's it's, uh, it's pretty high demand right now because uh, I don't think I paid that much. I think I read it from the library. Okay, now something else. If you are broke, go get yourself a library card and take your ass to the library. But the first book you should get, The New Economics for Industry, Government Education. Good book. Get it read it library buy it whatever do whatever all right second book this is uh or this could be i mean hold on yeah okay let's reframe that because this should be the first book both of these books are pretty much must-haves and going down here, because, you know, a lot of people are going back to this or they're really learning. Eh, it's not really. Huh. I wonder, this is just higher price. Scout around. Oh, here you go. This is a trick that I do. Like, I'm not going to pay 21 book, twenty one ninety nine for a book on Kindle when I can get it for four bucks in the hardback. <laughs> I still have I still read a lot of you know hard copy books because of this if I can get it real cheap I can wait a few days to get it I don't have to have it instantly and as you're putting together these books you know if you get some at a good price on Kindle and then order the rest and have them come to you it's not that bad of a deal so out of crisis get this book and uh get this one once again see that see that hardcover <laughs> and I want you to understand dude is a little dry I'll show you some videos in a minute but what he teaches is brilliant and you have to put yourself in the position of I'm a student and I'm learning you have to get past that I have to be entertained no 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 this is great stuff I got this uh, probably when my mind, well, if you know anything about how your mind works, your mind doesn't really stop growing and maturing until you're like 22, 24. Seriously. If you know this, that's why insurance companies keep your rates high <laughs> until age 25. I think that's what that's based on. But go ahead and get this good book. Go ahead and get this one. Once again, uh, library. Your library should have this because the older books, they should be there. So, you, like I said, if you don't have the money, you can go ahead and get the books from the library or get on the waiting list and just do that. And the most important thing is for you to get the, the information. But this is a great book. And. The 
this one. If you can find it, once again, check out the library. Uh, may may not be there. Another good one, because this is the guy that taught Toyota how to be Toyota. How uh, they created cars, and you know, like I said, I'm gonna show you some videos because I mean, it's really really fascinating what this stuff does because essentially. It's a philosophy of examining your process versus examining the outcome. So give you an example. Say you have a factory, right? And you're making teapots and out of uh, your teapots, you every, for every hundred teapots that you make, 20 have an issue, uh, 50 are fine, 20 have an issue, 10 are broken. So there's defects and there's problems in your manufacturing process. What typical managers do is they like, okay, well, we're going to create irregular. So we're going to take the 50 perfect teapots and we're going to put those in our regular distribution chain. And we're going to take the substandard or less than perfect teapots and we're going to put them in outlet stores or we're going to sell them online or we're going to put them on eBay. Now, what Dr. Deming teaches is why are those 50 other teapots screwed up? What's wrong with your process? So instead of managing an outcome, that's what the first solution was, was to manage outcome. It's like these 50 teapots are messed up, so we're going to put them in different distribution channels. The dimming method is, we'll go ahead and examine, okay, we're going to go to the front of the manufacturing line. Okay, this step works, and you're going to go from the front. Okay, and ah, Okay, and, and that, that step, that section's fine. The teapots, <clears throat> excuse me, are coming out the way they're supposed to. Then we're going to go to the second leg of the manufacturer process. And it's like, oh, this machine, sometimes it stamps right, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we're going to replace that machine. Then we go through the run, and now, okay, we're getting 70 perfect teapots, and we only have 30 irregulars. Okay, we're going to go back to the manufacturing process. We're at first leg. So we're going to start from the beginning because it could be something to get beginning because conditions could have changed. Then we're going to get, look at this. And it's like, okay, first step's good. Second step's good. Third step's good. Fourth step's good. Fifth step, oh, here's a problem. Uh, the person, when Bill is working, the T-Pox are fine. When William is working, Bill and William, get it. When William is working, he goes on smoke breaks and he is not a guy that pays attention to detail. So what we do is we say, Bill, we're going to give you 50 cents more per hour if you can work more or better yet, we say, Bill, we're going to promote you to manager. And what you're going to do is train everyone how to do what you do. So we put this into the manufacturing process. Now, all of a sudden, we have 100 perfect teapots every time. That's the Demons method versus managing outcomes. You manage the process going ahead with uh, what we were doing with eBay. I hated eBay <laughs> and to manage the outcome was to put up with eBay um, to just deal with it. So what I did was I got rid of eBay and I managed the process. I created a process, went out, found four people. Actually, I approached a bunch of people. Most people said no. And we created a process where I bought stuff from storage units and I took it to them. There was no dealing with returns, customer service. All of that stuff became out of our sphere of influence. It was just I created a manufacturing process. I got the materials and I then sent them, I delivered them to our, our business partners. I spent less time on eBay doing that and made 500 times more money because I managed the process. And this is one of the things that like, you know, my first book, making money A to Z with self storage and auctions. I frequently hear that it's a very good business book because a lot of the stuff in there is about creating processes and managing processes. And that's one of the reasons that I like Rick's Nick Saban, University of Alabama football coach. He has a system and in his system it's about managing the process. He doesn't tell you to go for a touchdown. He tells his quarterbacks to 
make that play perfect. If it's a pitch play, make that pitch play perfect. Then the guy he's pitching to it, do your job as perfectly as you can. Managing the process versus trying to manage outcomes. And then another one who has a system that manages processes, San, I mean, San Antonio Spurs, two years in a row. Now, I want you to really think about this. Two years in a row with a team that's supposedly in decline because they have a system you are able to plug them into the process. So since there's a system in the process, you come in and this is your role in the process. And I say that because that's a very successful way for you to run your business. I don't care if you're making cookies. I don't care if you are making bracelets because one of the things that I'm doing and I talk about in 30 days to 2,500 bucks and here on this YouTube channel, how to make money, how to build a business is to build something will create the necessity of having some sort of process. And what people are going to do is try not to get bogged down by the details or let someone else do that. When you don't understand your business process, you don't understand your business. And if you read all of his stuff, uh, this is one. Yeah, you can get this one pretty cheap. This is a good book. I mean, I've read all this stuff. Like I've read pretty much close to 4,000 books from first grade up until now. That's what I estimate. And with the bulk of that, I'll say probably thirty five hundred from the first grade to like, uh, well, it's like twenty two between first grade and when I was twenty two years of age because I was always reading. So I've read a lot of this stuff because I would go into the library and library. I was like, what should I read? And they're like, well, you should try this. This guy's great. He taught the uh, Japanese because, you know, back in the day, librarians were like really cool on recommending books. Now, you know. I don't know how many people actually go to the library. I don't know if it's like that anymore because I have not been to a library in my like five or six years. But that's a way you can get some of these books or and they may have them on tape. Uh, some libraries still have books on tape. So this is a way you can get this stuff. Now, I'm going to show you the guy. Now, this is when he's a little older. Uh, but once again, do this. Go to the W. Edwards Deming 14 points. And you know, go to YouTube and you're going to find several videos about him talking and understand that video shows you. I mean, this is shortly, this is just a little bit before he, because uh, he, he's been around for a while. I think he was almost 90 when he died and he was still working and teaching. You know, I, I do believe that having a purpose for your life keeps you young and enthusiastic, engaged and gives your body a reason to do what it needs to do to keep you alive. So do that. Check out these videos. You know, I mean, there's a ton of stuff here. So if you can't get the books, don't have the money, don't have a car, you can still get great information and then do this. Get rid of that. And see, you'll you'll see uh, there's more stuff tons of things just you know take your time create a playlist just go through it listen to it and understand this stuff's going to be in the 70s it's going to be in the 80s and the you know it's just not going to be like our presentations are today it'll be more organic and more authentic but this is uh one of the first thing this is the first video in the uh, glendon cameron's reading list things you should read things that will help you in your business and uh check it out like Go to Amazon, just put that in, and you'll be good to go. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.